controls like this details view are essential for tools creation. I will show you how to implement it quickly with editor utility widgets. Let's close this preview asset and create one from scratch. Navigate to content browser and right mouse button. Then move to editor utilities section and pick editor utility widget. I'm going with the default stack box. The option you chose here doesn't really matter in our case. Let's call it EUW, maybe tutorial, tech, art, corner, details view. Now let's open it and make sure the editor is docked. Right now we are in the designer view and we have to find details view in the palette. When we drag and drop it onto the canvas, you will notice that it is displaying an undefined object. And when you think about how the details view works, it makes perfect sense. The details view displays properties of some specific object, and we will have to set this object in the blueprint graph. But right now the object is not set and thus it is undefined. So I guess that's clear. We have to select it and enable is variable. And from now on, this widget is available in the graph view and we can start working with it. If you would like to set the object it is controlling, you just have to drag and drop it onto the graph view and then use set object node. Then you can either pick some asset from the content browser here or use a variable. If you want to change the object that this details view is showing you in current time, you can of course call this node again. Maybe you want to check every few frames if currently selected asset changed, or maybe you want to have some button. When you click the button, you would go through a list of selected assets and who knows, maybe the first one would be the one that is set on this details view. So of course you can do it anytime, but if you want it to be visible in the designer here, you should set it before this widget is constructed, not during runtime after pressing some button. And that is the case I'm going to do. I would like you to see effects of our actions very quickly. And that is why we are going to assign object here, but I am going to go with some variable. So let's create a variable. I will call it example mesh. And that's going to be a static mesh type. And I am going with object reference. But of course, keep that in mind. If you are working with texture, skeleton, animation, uh, lights, it can be whatever you want. So you don't have to follow me exactly. Pick what suits you. So now we have to connect the execution flow. And if we compile and save, and run the widget or go to the designer, it is still not going to work, but that is only because we haven't picked the default value. So make sure that when this example mesh is selected, you scroll down to details and set some default value. If it is required, you may have to compile before you can set it, but last but not least, Let's pick some asset. Maybe let's go with cone or some cube. The shape cube looks reasonable. And now we compile. And when we go back to the designer, we see the preview. And that's amazing. Everything works fine. And keep that in mind. It works because we did it on event preconstruct. Once again, let me remind you that if you are setting it uh, using some button, you will not see it clearly in the designer and you will have to run your widget and test it manually. That is perfectly fine. You just have to keep in mind that what you see in designer is not always what you see when you run the widget. And now more on the widget itself. I really like being able to search for stuff. So 
When the details view is selected, just go to this details tab, navigate to view section and allow filtering. That's so little, but changes so much. And now we can search for voxel or anything and we get it immediately. Another thing is that for me and for my tool, it may be showing too much. My view is cluttered. It's not browsable. I would like to limit to LOD settings, nanite settings, um, and maybe light map resolution, which is buried under some settings here. So if there is anything you would like to limit your view to, then keep a note of those names and just remove spaces. When you have LOD space settings, you will go with LOD settings and that's it. Just keep the camel case naming. So I'm noting down in my notepad LOD settings, nanite settings, and also this light map resolution. And when I'm back in the designer, I go back to view category and in categories to show, we can do nanite settings and LOD settings. And here in properties to show, I can do light map resolution. And it's very important that you make no typos. And I am currently praying that I made no typos as well. So compile, the view has refreshed. I just had to zoom out a bit to see that it actually refreshed. And when we run it, we only see the categories and properties we wanted. One minor thing to keep in mind is that even if you change order of those elements in the array to show, it is not going to influence what you see in the widget. So as you can see in the widget, LOD settings are before nanite settings and here in categories to show nanite settings are actually first and it doesn't really matter. And that's actually it. I really encourage you to go through more things here. Uh, you can add some tool tips. If I am not wrong, there may be even a favorite system. And that's really it. If you prefer a written version of this tutorial, it's down in the description. It's on my Medium blog completely for free. There are some GIFs, some write up. It may be easier to you to follow it um, instead of scrolling during the video the next time. And also, if you prefer doing actual tools and doing something from A to Z rather than watching videos like this, where I go and explain only a single widget, then you may like my Blueprint Automation course on Udemy. And one of the tools that we implement there is this Lights Manager. This Lights Manager scans for all the lights that are in the scene and lets you control them in the meantime. And if you add some light, maybe let's add some point light and move it here. You can just press refresh and then you are ready to start changing its properties. And that's it. But if you don't really like Udemy, just stick around on the channel. I will be posting things from time to time. So you may want to subscribe. That's it. See you next time.